Greetings ladies and mental gents, and welcome to today's Reddit quickie video, taken from the HFY subreddit called A Package Deal Written by Infernalism. A link to the original will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. You're certain? As certain as I can be. We've looked at it from six different directions, and our tech priests all agree that it is legitimate. A real signal from another world. The Prathen was a pragmatic people, but still steeped in their faiths. When the signal was first detected on a device that had been engineered to listen to gravimetric distortions on a near-world space, they immediately sought out the tech priests. Runth, it's only been a few days and you're telling me that this is artificial. More than that, it's a message, we're certain of it. And you're certain because... When the Prathen needed to hash things out, they usually did so in a large open area best described as an open auditorium, filled with rocks to lounge on and artificial steam vents all around them. Venting scented steam every so often. It was incredibly relaxing. Legend said that every major advancement that they had achieved came while discussing in the lounging pits. Because it's a binary language. Incredibly simple. It looks like it was designed to be deciphered. It barely took us any time at all. All this is wonderful, Runth, but why? Wait... You've already deciphered it. It's only been a few days. Just get the conclave together, Fex. The tech priests are still sorting out the message. The heads of the Prathen people, all six continents worth, were not used to being summoned, but they were here, all the same. Brought together by the head of technology priesthood and the leader of the engineering caste, which was not something that happened all that often. So rare was it, in fact, that most would have rejected the summons were it not for the curiosity as to what could possibly bring these two rival groups together in a singular focus. The lounging pits were all well heated, but no steam vents which irked a few. But apparently there was a real desire to keep people focused and not half asleep from the scented steam. That curiosity was doubled by the announcement that a real honest-to-God signal from the outside of the world. And it was grew by power of ten when they were informed that the signal was already decoded and ready for them to hear. Tag Priest Runth Adawa, you've heard the message already. No, Principate, it was not my place to listen, only to prepare. The message itself is ready for you to hear, though. There are some distortions in there that we have since filtered out. The several hundred Protha leaders muttered amongst themselves before the few booming cracks of the ritual stone upon the floor of the Principate, head of the conclave, brought them to silence. You may play it now. And with a nod and a touch upon a built-in monitor screen, the room was filled with a jabbering of some sort. A series of grunts and explosive verbal enunciations filled the auditorium with a few seconds before babbling immediately shifted to Prathen. Manity, this message will repeat in five minutes. Faces turned to the tech priest, slight confusion as they obviously weren't prepared for the use of their own terminology in the message. Where possible, we have substituted our own terminology for technical terms to make the message as clear as possible to minimize confusion. And how do you know that you got the translations right? That will be explained momentarily. The conclave was curious and would likely have demanded answers on the spot right then except, Hello, my name is John McGregor, pilot, United States Air Force. A person, an alien person, was suddenly speaking to them. If you're receiving this message, then you're both technically capable of receiving it and translating it, and curious enough to hear what it is to say. I come bearing a message amongst other things, but to understand this fully, you need to understand a few things first. Our world is called Earth. It is very likely to be very far from your own world, out in one of the arms of the spiral galaxy that we have named the Milky Way. We don't know what kind of world you live on, but ours was largely lush with life, even in the most inhospitable of places. We misused our world for so long, but we were finally starting to realize that and were just starting to do something about it when it happened. It was the beginning of a growing season in one part of our world, the northern half, when it was discovered that all of our crops were being born without any ability to germinate seeds. Our livestock, likewise, were giving birth to stillborn young. The two Prathian leaders whispered to each other here and there. 
What is livestock? They apparently grew their animals for slaughter instead of hunting them. Sounds boring. Maybe they weren't the hunting type. Shrugs were exchanged. It only took a few days to realize that it was happening to us as well. Something somehow had robbed us of our ability to breed. Worse still, it wasn't limited. It seemed to be affecting all living things, plants and animals alike, across the world. A horrifying thought, their collection hissed out at each other, slowly coming to realize that they were listening to the voice of a dead man. We were never a unified people. We fought wars over resources, religion and politics, but we had come so close to getting past this before the fate fell upon us. A good portion of our people fell to despair, malice and apathy. Many killed themselves. Those that remained threw themselves into discovering who had murdered us. We discovered a few things. First, we discovered the source. We recognized that the structure of the virus was alien from anything that we'd ever seen on our world. It attacked all manner of life down to a microscopic level. And most surprising of all, it wasn't trying to dominate or overtake the biosphere. It was just destroying its means to reproduce. It had to be something artificially made. And like that, it was like our people were reborn. Those that had fallen to despair and grief dragged themselves back up again. We were a doomed race. We all knew that. We had a few years left, aided by our stock seed supplies and lab-grown meat products, and we made the most of them. It took a few years, but an analysis of the earlier astronomical footage showed an arrival of a rogue comet in our system that fell apart just within the inner system. A few weeks after that comet's arrival, the viral attack began. That's when it became painfully obvious that this wasn't an attack on our world, but on the entire solar system. We had to conclude that whoever had done it had done so without them even knowing we were even here. They murdered us without even noticing us. Bitterness, their anger, and a hint of despair that the voice had spoken on before. A cruel universe that wiped them out without even the dignity of acknowledgement. Once we realized that, we that were left poured ourselves into two projects. The first being this message itself, and we had originally started the message program as a way to find communication systems that could function over long distances with minimal lag time, even millions and millions of miles. We discovered through study of gravimetric distortions that gravity waves could be used to dilate space and separate its layers. Space has layers? Now they were really intrigued, though equally sad of the dying people and angry at how they'd been mistreated. The Prathen were a pragmatic people, but also full of faith and their gods were merciful entities. That would never allow this to happen. Their world was a blessed one seeming protected from harm, and now that was being shown to not be the case everywhere. It was a galling thought that one was already provoking the Prathian leaders into introspection. We found a way to efficiently transmit a signal through the layers of space that allowed the signal to travel at a great speed with nearly no distortion or loss of signal, even over immense distances. This gave us a path forward and a means to succeed at our first goal, that being our gift to you whoever you are. Embedded within the signal, this message, you'll find the data package. Within the data package, you'll find the sum total of humanity's knowledge, with three special sections. The first, a viral counter agent for the viral attack. We offer this because we believe that whoever sent that comet to our system did not choose us at random. Our people have spent so much time listening to the stars, looking for others and finding none. We knew life was a powerful thing and it could and would grow in all manner of hostile environments. So why weren't we finding any proof of it? This attack answered that paradox for us in a way that we could not have anticipated. What study we could put into it before the end indicated many systems showed signs of the viral attack as well. With that in mind, we developed a viral counterattack agent that worked well if it is in a place before the life end of viral attack gets there. Study it if you wish. You'll find that it is sufficient to defeat the virus as long as it is in a place before the attack begins. The second package is our data on the gravimetric communication system. Using this, you'll be able to reach out to find others around you in a way that we never could. Do so. Create a galaxy of life, of communication and learning. Lastly, 
Well, you would think by listening to me and this message that humanity was a glorious bunch. But we're not as peaches and cream. We believed in a God of mercy and forgiveness. But when that God first started out, he was a God of retribution. They say when we were made in his image, so maybe it makes sense that we'd strike out even if we're dying. We learned the trajectory of the comet and the other studies confirmed that the other comets that all discovered were also coming from that same location. It was surprisingly easy. Maybe they just didn't think anyone would survive long enough to retaliate. Who knows? Our engineers and explorers, what few skilled people we had left, had crafted something in an asteroid belt of our own system. It was, strictly speaking, an automated spacecraft, though it was mostly two caps on a long, solid hung of tungsten, just about three miles in length. At one end, we put an automatic navigation system. At the other, we put a propulsion system that creates thrust, having microwaves bounced around the inside of a vacuum-sealed container. It's called an EM drive. You'll find the details of it in the technical data attached to this message. Essentially, we turned it on and aimed it at the people who killed our world. Our scientists say that the EM drive could get the ship up to 72% the speed of light before it impacts, destroying that world before it even has a chance to respond. That's a mercy compared to what they did to us. We spent our last year setting up transmitters in orbit on our moon and every other stable location that stood a chance of surviving, and a long term without anyone around to maintain them, to send out this message. Shortly before the ship was launched, the last of our scientists asked that they be allowed to attach this gravimetric transmitter to the kill vehicle systems when they realized how much space existed between our world and the world that murdered us. It'll pass by thousands of star systems that might hold life. Life that had not yet been wiped out. We had always hoped that we would, one day, discover how to reach out and find others. Others, like yourselves, and find our pace in the galaxy. Perhaps contribute in some meaningful way. We were robbed of that for reasons we'll never know. But that does not mean that we still cannot contribute. Use the knowledge to protect yourselves. Use it to find one another. Use it to reach one another and come together. We, humanity, wasted so much time coming together. If we'd only tried harder, earlier... Maybe we might have had a better chance at survival. But you, whoever you are, you have a chance now. Please, make the most of it. Remember us. We are humanity. This message will repeat in five minutes. A conclave was silent for some time before they began to debate the merits of the veracity of the message. Hard questions were asked of the tech priesthood and the astronomers. The signal that they were receiving was coming from a small backwater system in a nearby arm of the spiral. A dead world with no signs of life at all. The supposed weapon, there was no sign. The Prathen were very pragmatic and studious, but they moved with an uncharacteristic speed for once, finally accepting the truth of the message though that was made much easier by the obvious usefulness of the data package that had been found embedded in the message itself. It took them two generations to craft the transmitter and receiver, but eventually it was flipped on by the head priest Runth, with the receiver keyed in for a specific frequency of sublayers, only to find silence there. Silence persisted for long minutes until Runth keyed the transmitter with one claw finger and spoke in his native Prathen. Hello? A long minute before words came back to him through the receiver, speaking in that same binary language of the message. Do you remember them? Silence again, as the conclave stared and muttered amongst themselves for another long minute before they spoke again. We are the Prathen, and we remember humanity. And that, my friends, is the end of this Reddit quickie. I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to support this channel, there are numerous ways to do so, listed in the description down below. The easiest and best way would be to share this video and my channel as much as possible. I'll see you all in the next video, and I hope that you have a good one until then. Cheers.